Hi everyone, my name is Danielle Lee. I am the Cyber Protect Officer at South Yorkshire Police. I'm helping out the Yorkshire and Humberside Regional Organised Crime Unit today. So today I'm going to speak to you about Cyber Choices and Cyber Protect as well. So we'll start off with the Cyber Protect. So that is just raising awareness of like the different types of cyber crimes that are out there, how people can protect themselves whilst online as well. Where Cyber Choices, we just want to educate young people of what they do online, make sure that it's safe and legal, stay away from cyber crime and use that skill for good. So I'm based in Sheffield, um, not too far away. And my role is to go out to schools, community groups, businesses, just to raise the awareness of online safety, what straight forward sorry, measures you can do as well to put in place to make sure that you are secure as well as your devices whilst you're online. It's something I do where I contact victims on a weekly basis so I'm able to give them that, provide that support and the information so they don't become a repeat victim. So this presentation is going to last around 45 minutes. If there are any questions, then please feel free to put your hand up. So let's start. So cybercrime. So cybercrime is any criminal activity that can only be carried out through the internet. It's one of the fastest growing criminal activities across the world and it can affect anyone. It's not necessarily just because some people are young and they've been brought up with technology that they won't become a victim. It could be that somebody around your age could have their social media hacked. That person could be um, putting things on that you wouldn't necessarily put on or anything like that or contacting your friends or it could be a business or a older person who's been scammed out of their details as well. It's one of the fastest growing criminal activities and the criminals will exploit every avenue possible so it could be that with the COVID-19 it could be like the NHS COVID vaccination something like that with like Black Friday coming up as well they'll do like maybe way too good deals to be true something like maybe you could get a Disney Plus really cheap for like two pound or something where it just seems way too good or there could be other things maybe it's some beat headphones things like that so they will exploit everything that they can unfortunately and it can affect people differently if they have been a victim of cybercrime. It's not necessarily that it's just the financial loss. It's also the emotional side. I do contact victims on a weekly basis and it could be things like loss in confidence. They can have maybe in denial they think that the scam is real. It could be like relationship breakdowns um, with family members as well. So it is quite impactful. On the screen these are some examples of some cybercrime. So we're just going to move on to phishing scams. So phishing scams is where a scammer tries to trick you out of giving personal or financial information. They'll pretend to be an organisation. It could be maybe Netflix, could be the banks, something like that. It's normally through email, but it also can be through text message, through social media, through phone calls as well. And they are really um, sophisticated. So what they'll say if you get a phishing email, it could be that it's your mobile provider, they've got your latest bill, you need to open the attachment to open it to find out how much they're going to charge you. So you want to open it to see how much they're going to charge you and unfortunately you download some malicious software onto your device and infects it. Or it could be that your Netflix is needs somebody's on your account, you need to verify it now. So you are encouraged to click on the link once you're taken, well, once you click on the link, you're taken to a website, that's a fake one. You put your details in and that's how they capture them. So this is just an example of some signs to look, look out for. It could be maybe if your phone bill comes in the middle of the month and you receive an email supposedly from whoever you're with and that's the end of the month, they could address you by dear customer so they don't use your name if you've got an online account with them they really should but just because they've got some basic details about you it doesn't necessarily mean that they are legitimate as well it could be something way too good to be true they try and create an emotion so it could be that there's a sense of urgency that if you don't buy this product maybe it's some beats or something and um, by the end of today the offer will go off so it's just to cry, try and encourage you to click on it could be some spelling mistakes they have got better at this as well if you do hover over the link it'll 
say, well, well, it's trying to, uh, sorry, where it's truly trying to take you as well. Have a look at the email address where it's from as well, and that will really help. These are just some examples. So I received that one on the left myself. I don't bank with them, so I knew it was not my um, <clears throat> account that was wrong or anything like that. But maybe if you do bank with Santander, they're just kind of hoping that you do uh, and it falls on a bank that you are with or whoever the organisation that they're um, coming from. The other one, I have got Netflix, but they addressed me by Dear Dan and I knew that my account was okay. I'd just checked it that day and I wouldn't verify it by clicking on that link either. So does anybody want to share a phishing scam that they receive themselves? If they want to share, maybe one of their friends, one of your friends has got it or anything like that. We've not received one. I very much doubt that. Oh, brilliant, go on. I've got a bank in one like you, but well, I'm with Halifax and I've already got my Halifax details already, but I got one for um, HSBC. Right. And they're saying that I've made another payment and I'm just trying to click me to click and verify them. Okay, that's great, that one. Then um, you realised it wasn't yours. And did you speak to like an adult or something just to say, brilliant. Did you have your hand up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good one. With especially with like the Christmas season coming up, there will be people who are buying stuff. Um, just make sure that if you are receiving an email, that it is generally the genuine one as well, because they can catch you out. Go through the trusted website or contact number that you know is trusted just to verify it really is you. They won't be asking you um, for money for payment. You've already done your delivery, you've already paid for that. So just double check that it really isn't them. And if they're asking for personal information or financial, that should be something that's kept private. So anything like that, just double check. So great, like I said, um, just double check, just them little checks just to help protect you. Don't respond back to the email and don't click on any links or attachments. If you do want to see your bill, maybe you've got an app on your phone if you were EE or something like that or the, any other providers, check on there as well. For scam text messages, you can forward them on to 7726 and that spells out spam on your keyboard and all the UK mobile network operators, they all work together to block numbers that are generating spam on your network. And that just really helps others. So it's great that you found that's a scam message, but others might not do. It could be a family member and they may fall for it. So that just helps protect them. There's also an email address where you can forward the email on to the National Cyber Security Centre. So that's where all our guidelines come from and they've set up this new reporting service. So if you do think you've got a suspicious email, you can forward it on to them. They will assess it and they will look to take it down if it is <coughs> malicious. So let's go on to passwords. So the current guidelines for passwords is to use three random words. So it's something that can't be used like such as your mother's maiden name, maybe if you've got a pet or something like that. Maybe you, in your living room, you've got a paper wall that has a lotus and a mirror. So you could do paper, lotus, mirror, something like that. And for your email account, you need a really strong password. So just because if a hacker gets into that, then they've got like the gateway to all your other accounts. They can just do forgot your password and then they've got access to your Facebook, things like that. So maybe add an extra word, some special characters. So you need to have a different password for each account you do have. And I know with how many online accounts we do have, it can be quite hard to keep up. So what you can do is you can save your passwords to the browser. It is safe to do so. Internet providers are constantly updating their software just to keep your details secure. And it's way better than using the same password. There's also a password manager if you want to have one of them that stores all your passwords in one place. And the only password you need to remember is just that password manager. But just make sure that is really secure. Let's move on. So these are just some examples of some strong and weak passwords. So I went onto a website to see how secure it would be. If you do go anything like that, just make sure not to put anything too similar to your password, just in case. As you can see, three random words really does help. So if you had um, Laugh Clown Circus, I know it's not entirely three random words, but it would take 35,000 years to hack. Whereas if anybody, a football fan, if you've got it as Arsenal, that would be instantly. So it's not very good at all. And you can see how it really helps. So this website is a really great website. It tells you if you've been subject to a data breach. So all you need to do is put your email address in. I think you can put your telephone number in as well. 
it tells you if you have so you've got an online account with somebody unfortunately they've been hacked into and your details have been obtained through that i've put my own personal email address in and some do come up so nobody is perfect either if any do come up just make sure to change the password and that's why you need a different password for each account you do have because if in that data breach they've got your password for say um I think it was LinkedIn that were on mine. If I had the same password from my LinkedIn as my email address, um, then they would be able to access that as well. So, and it could be a reason why you've seen me more phishing scam emails. So have a look on there <clears throat> and make sure not to reuse the same passwords. So software and app updates, you need the latest software application um, and updates just because it's able to, if you do switch this off, it leaves your device vulnerable to any malicious software and applications. It not only just adds new features, but it also fixes them to security vulnerabilities. It can be quite irritating. You're maybe in the middle of something and it pops up. You need to update it, but it's there for a reason. You could um, have it to do it automatically to do it. So maybe at night, causes minimal disruption. If you are downloading anything, just make sure to do it on the official um, websites. If it's like Zoom or something like that, if somebody sends you an email saying this is the latest Zoom application, it's probably just a fake version and you're probably gonna download um, some malware onto your device. Use like Google Play, Apple Store, things like that. And just look at the reviews as well if you are downloading anything and um, make sure that you have a antivirus as well on all your devices and to keep them doing a regular scan and updated so you don't even have to think about it backing up your data jenny you do this you got any schoolwork that you need to back up what would you do if you lost it <laughs> yeah so it'd be quite devastating if you had some homework that's maybe due next week and then suddenly you lose it and you've got to redo it all again. So you've done all that hard work. So definitely back it up. Think about things that you wouldn't want to lose out on. Is there some family photos, something like that, schoolwork, just back it up and test that back up as well. Because you may think that you've backed it up and it may not be the latest version that you've worked on as well. Really easy to do. Maybe if you've got iCloud or if you've got a USB, just make sure to back it up. Two-factor authentication, this is really great. So this is another way of double checking you are who you say you are while you're online accounts. So your first one is a layer of protection is your password. The second one is a code, so that gets sent through an authentication app, or it could be a text message, things like that. Put it on your most important accounts, so your social media, your emails as well, and that'll really help. So even if a criminal knows your password, they still need that second layer of information to get onto your account. So it's a bit like the cash point, so you need your card and your PIN to access your money. That's it. And it's not like every time you go onto maybe your Instagram that you'll need to put that code in. It could be if there's been a new login or something like that. I've got it set up on my PayPal. So every time I do a payment, I need that code. And that's just kind of like a, for me, I like that sense of security that it does have. This is just an example how you can do it on your Facebook as well. Really easy to do. Go on the help support pages of whatever account, your most important accounts and then filtering down. But go on your helps pages on there and it'll show you how you can do it. It really does help. So digital footprint, you've got to really be careful and think before you do post anything. Everything that you do online, there's a trail of data about you. It could be something great to show off, maybe you're great at guitar or something, or it could be something that could bite you later in life. Once you do share something, you know, it's out of your control. You may think you've deleted it, but somebody already could have taken a screenshot of that and already could have shared that on. If you think every time you share, would this be okay if it was on the screen up here? Or if it, my teacher saw it, if my parents saw it? So just be really careful. Um, and just think about that because it could be, I know employers are starting to do like social media checks. So they could have a look at your social media and if there's something that maybe not reflective of the company, you could lose out on a job and it could come back to bite you. Um, has everyone heard of um, the Chrissy Teigen where she put some really inappropriate tweets quite a few years ago aimed at somebody? Um, she's a celebrity, um, I think a personality one or something. And she put some offensive tweets like 10 years ago on Twitter. Somebody's gone through her Twitter that far back and um, screenshotted them and sent them to, I think, a newspaper or something like that. 
and then she's lost out on jobs and things like that. So you've got to be really careful. For your social media as well, I would keep it to private just so you can share what you want with who you want. It is a public platform, so there's lots and lots of people that are all across the world that can access it and it's neat, something that you need to keep your personal info private. <clears throat> this is just an example of a lady, so she was the first um, Youth Crime Commissioner for, I think it was Somerset and Avon Police. So her Twitter, um, some really inappropriate stuff as you can read on there and um, she resigned after this so it's something that somebody's gone through her twitter feed just to have a look and then highlighted it um, so we've just got to be really careful this is just another visual one how would you feel if it's up there if it's something that could embarrass somebody or, or others it's not just necessarily yourself don't put it up there as well this is just a short video um, hopefully we'll play and then this is I think it's one more slide and then this that's the end of this one and we'll go on to cyber choices and I'll take any questions <sighs> Great, so I just think that's just a great video just to illustrate, just be careful of what you do put on social media. If somebody's like that, you think it's for free, what are they getting back in return? And all that information that they got was in the time that it makes a cup of coffee. So criminals will have more time than that as well. So just got to be really careful. What social media are we on? Everything, TikTok, stuff like that. Is it private? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So I really would recommend that you put it to private just so, you know, that people aren't able to gather that information on you. That's something that's personal. Last slide, guys. <clears throat> so Action Fraud is the UK's national reporting centre for fraud and cybercrime. So if you have been a victim, then you need to report it to them. They've got a telephone number and you can do it online. We really encourage people to report if they have been a victim, just so we can get a better picture of what is affecting people in the um, cyber world and how we can best tackle it. As well, able to give that support and um, information to victims. And if there are any lines of inquiries, then we can investigate to stop the scammers. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. There's my email address there if you do want to take a note of it. If you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to take them um, and then I'll go on to the cyber choices. Are there any questions at all? If it's maybe not even yourself, it could be maybe a friend, you want to ask for a friend or something. No? Okay, that's fine. I mean, I'll stop a bit behind after if you do want to have a talk. So I will quickly go on to Cyber Choices. So Cyber Choices is a national crime initiative. So it is delivered on a local level. There's other um, officers who do it all around um, the UK. So it focuses on those who have committed cyber um, dependent will, um, cyber crime. So we'll go on to what cyber dependent is later on. So there are four aims. So 
We raise the awareness of the computer misuse act, give some examples of what is illegal. With the information we provide through this presentation, you should be able to make an informed choice of what you do online. If you do choose to go down the cybercrime route and make, um, well, commit an offence, then you are aware of what the consequences are. We work with young people to, who have not only just committed cyber offences, but they may go on to commit them, just to try and steer them down a positive path, use their cyber skills for good, and to prevent re-offending. Last one is promote legal tech opportunities. There's so much available out there in the cyber industry in terms of careers that we really want you to like pro practice and progress your skills in a safe environment and go into a career to use that skill. So we provide the resources for you. So these are just some facts. So does anybody want to guess what the average age of arrest is for cybercrime? Yeah. Uh, just a little bit. I've got another eye Anyone else want to give it a guess? 13. Nope. Nine. Nine. No, let's go higher. Yeah. <laughs> 16. No, a little bit higher. A little bit lower. We can get this next one. <laughs> yeah, well done. So uh, the average age of arrest is 17 years old. Whereas compared to more traditional crimes, such as drug trafficking, the average age of arrest is 37 years old. And I think 17 is really quite relatively young, especially when the doors you know, are opening and everything like that, you've still got your life ahead of you. And the um, person who would have been arrested, they will have been doing that activity, illegal activity before that as well. So there's two types of cyber crime. So there's cyber enabled. So that is your traditional crime that is enhanced through the internet, such as maybe selling um, illegal goods, um, something like that, or maybe identity theft, where you don't necessarily need the internet. Where is cyber dependent? That is where you need that technology in order to commit the offence. Um, an example of a distributed denial of service. Anyone heard of that? No? Okay, that's fine. So distributed denial of service, that is where a, maybe a computer or maybe a website gets overloaded with requests and it's not able to operate as it should. There's a legitimate one such as, what's the festival in Hull? Is he a festival at all? No? Okay, let's do another festival then. Um, <laughs> what about Leeds Festival? That's like a closest one to you. Uh, so it could be that you want to get tickets for Leeds Festival everyone is on at the same time so there's so many people on that maybe overloads it and people are not able to get through they kind of get kicked off that but how it's used is an illegal it could be like attack on a business so that their customers aren't able to use their website has everyone seen harry potter yeah brilliant do you know when he gets the letter for hogwarts and it comes through the post nice and easy but then it comes in and it just floods everywhere causes absolute chaos that's just kind of an example of it. Could be like distributing um, a virus. So if you send somebody maybe a phishing scam email with a, a virus attached to it, something like that, or maybe hacking to somebody's <coughs> computer. So why do people commit cyber dependent crime? Do you want to give me some reasons why you think somebody would? Yeah? Some people just do it and some other people do it because they can't, they've done something bad in their life now. That's the only way they can actually um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. fall themselves. Yeah, that's a great, great one. Nice one. Yeah. Like desperation, like not only for themselves, but also to like provide for the family as well. Okay, I mean, I haven't heard that one um, before. For like the low level cyber offences, financial gain isn't the biggest motivator. That's for like the more serious offences. Um, but yeah. Because Yeah, so you think, yeah, I'm going to test them out, see what I can do, what am I capable of. So yeah, anyone else or do you want me to give them, yeah? I'll just give them you. That's fine. So you might think because you're behind a computer screen, you're not going to get caught, that the police aren't online, which isn't the case at all. Could be for a joke. I think you said that, didn't you? That you think, oh, I'll just play a prank on my friend, which is not very nice for the person who the joke is on. Maybe your schoolwork's not hard enough. You want something to challenge you, something like that. Could be that you want to be liked by others, so a bit of peer pressure, things like that. There could be an availability of like online tools, online forums, things like that. So let's go on to the Computer Misuse Act. So unauthorised access to computer material. So the first one is your, at your friend's house, you're shoulder surfing them 
and they're inputting some details to log into account. You remember them details and later on you read all their messages without their permission. Next one, unauthorised access with intent to commit or facilitate commission of further offences. So at your friend's house again, they go make a cup of tea, they leave the tablet on the sofa, you go onto their tablet without their permission and say you go onto their Amazon account, you buy yourself a computer. Next one, so what online games do we play? Rainbow Six. Roblox, what's that, sorry? Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six, I've actually heard of that one. Um, Anyone else? Any online games? Pardon? All oh, right. Okay. I didn't realise that were a game. But <laughs> um, yeah. So, say you're playing. I'm just thinking a game where you got to beat somebody. So FIFA 22 or something. Say you're playing that, and um, your friend doesn't like that you're winning. So what they do is use a booter to knock you offline, and therefore they're able to win the game. Did anybody know that was an offence if somebody booted you offline? Good, good, that's really good then. Uh, when, sometimes when I do these presentations, they're like, oh no, it's just like a bit of banter, that's what we do, but that's not the point of online games, it's there for fun, and it seems a bit like um, a bit of cheating. So next one, unauthorised acts causing, um, sorry, uh, acts causing or creating risk of serious damage. Say you're hacking to the police network and that results in delays to emergency calls, even though it wasn't your intention, you were still reckless in your actions. And then the last one, making, supplying or obtaining articles to use it in another computer misuse act. So just the ones that we've um, covered as well. So you download some software, so you're able to bypass some login credentials on your friend's laptop and hack into it, but you haven't had chance to use it yet. So we're just going to go on to the consequences. So there are some long-term and short-term consequences. Cybercrime is a serious offence and we will make every effort to identify and prosecute the offenders. We do try and go, you know, get them before we go down that prosecution route because we don't want the doors closing on you before they've even really opened. But these, this slide just outlines the maximum possible sentence that you can get. So if you maybe boot somebody offline, it's up to a maximum prison sentence of up to 10 years. Some short term ones, so you could receive a visit from me um, to receive a warning, could be that you're expelled from school, could have your internet ban or limited. If you are under investigation, then that could mean that your device is seized and um, you don't have access to maybe your PlayStation or your Xbox, something like that. If you are convicted or cautioned, that could affect if you want to go travelling maybe in the future what um, university that you maybe want to go in, if you want to go that way, or what employment that you do want to go into. It is quite impactful. <clears throat> the impact on others, so it is seen as maybe like a victimless crime. I don't know if that's because they're over a computer, you don't see the person in front of you, but it definitely isn't. I've said before, I do contact victims on a weekly basis where they have been quite impacted on, uh, because they are a victim of cybercrime could be a business as well especially with the pandemic they are struggling at the moment and they're just getting back on their feet which is great but if they're um, subject to a cyber attack that could maybe mean that they go under or to recover they've got to maybe make some job losses things like that so them job losses mean that they're not able to maybe provide for themselves for the family so it is quite impactful and then it's the reputation as well it could be that the person has physical because everyone asks about what what that means and um, so it could be like stomach ulcers or like headaches things like that so that's like the physical maybe because of the stress of being a victim so let's move on to something more positive so there's lots and lots of opportunities that are out there if you want a career in cyber and if you've got them skills which is brilliant to have but we just want you to use them in a great way and people want to find out how things interact how things work what vulnerabilities they have it could be that you want to learn how to code maybe experiment with what you've seen online and things like that <clears throat> and we just want you to make sure that you go into a career there's lots and lots available it's not just these three up here that Tech Future Careers, there is a 10 question where you can do it on like kind of your answers and based on your personality, what kind of career that you can go into in cyber. So it's only 10 questions, it won't take you long at all. So have a look on that. There's also all these resources um, on the Cyber Choices website, you can have a look on there as well. So you've got the booklet, so it'll be in there, um, which is great. Or just have a look on the website. It's not necessarily that you need a degree either. It could be that you can have a traineeship, get some more experience, some more qualifications as well, 
own apprenticeship just to get a feel for what it's like in the cyber industry. The Cyber First Bursary, that is where undergraduates can get £4,000 towards their studies and also a paid um, kind of like cybercrime internship to get that experience as well. So it's definitely worth having a look at. There's also bug bounties, so that is where like companies say um, to like ethical hackers, so like the good guys. If you can find any vulnerabilities on our systems and let us know about it so we're able to fix them, we'll give you a, um, a bit of money. And that just gives the ethical hacker a bit of challenge and you know just an incentive as a money and that just really helps so yeah let's move on so even if you're not particularly fussed about having a career in cyber there's also you could have it maybe as a hobby have you got like a local coding club things like that the cyber security challenge so they do challenges every so often the last one they did um it was like kind of like an interactive game so it covers like what we've just said about in this presentation, computer misuse at cyber security, and you can win some um, great stuff, some goodies. I think there was um, an NCA cyber goodie bag. There was also, was it a Chromebook and then a gaming chair, I think. So it's really good to so keep an eye out for that. Oh, there's like all these other ones. Immersive Labs as well, that's a really great one. Uh, most of these I think are free, but just have a look uh, at them. And then that's just really it. So we've gone through that. So I'm sorry, I've gone through a lot of information. If you do want any like resources, and you've got them, we've got some more downstairs as well, but I'll take any questions. Um, what I will say just to end off, if there's anything that you're doing online and you're not too sure, it, it could be illegal, it couldn't be, just ask somebody, you, you know, we're always learning something new, even in, like as adults, it's not that you should know everything. So it's just something, just have a speak with maybe uh, your parents or a teacher, something like that, just to double check. Um, but yeah, uh, that's it. So if there's any questions, then let me know. And as I said before, it could be that you know of a friend or something that's done something um, and you just want a bit of advice. But yeah. Great, thanks. <laughs>